Hi there, Steve Coffin here. Today, uh, I'm going to update you on my sort of extreme language learning where I'm trying to learn three languages at the same time. Uh, remember, if you uh, like these uh, videos, please subscribe. Um, so, uh, I said that I would, over the next nine months, try to study three languages at the same time, Arabic, Persian, and Turkish. And I also said that I would try to create a hundred links on link, that is to save a hundred new words every day in each of those three languages. So how am I doing? Well, I am missing the odd day. I have to confess. I tried very hard to do it every single day, but it's just not possible. You know, friends visiting, I'm playing golf a lot of the time. It's just not possible to do it every day, but pretty close. I think I'm still, last couple of days I was managing to do it again in each of the three languages. Second point is, you know, I have my moods where I'm more interested in Turkish or more interested in Persian, but right now I'm more interested in Arabic. And I'm gonna explain why. It started because, as so often happens in my language learning, my wife was watching an Egyptian uh, series on Netflix. So I tried to listen to the Egyptian Arabic and I couldn't understand just about anything. I mean, I got the odd word here and there, but by and large, didn't understand it. So I said, that's not very good. So I went to Netflix and I tried to go through, you know, frame by frame. And the subtitles on Netflix are in standard Arabic. But as I looked at it, the standard Arabic didn't really match what people were saying. So that wasn't very good. So then I went on the internet and I said, I may as well learn Egyptian Arabic. So I, you know, uh, surfed around and I found this wonderful collection of material in Egyptian Arabic put out by a website called Lingualism. And I'll leave a link here in the description box. And they had their series, one called uh, Egyptian Arabic Voices. One was called Egyptian Arabic Diaries, consisted of random people talking about themselves with transcript, uh, which is of course ideal for link, and uh, other explanations and exercises. So I got in touch with the people who put this out and we are in conversation now to make this available at link in the new year. Uh, secret by the way, the library and the content section will be revamped and it'll be easier to find things and it'll be easier to feature some of this wonderful material. So uh, Matthew over at Lingualism has agreed to make his wonderful series both in Egyptian Arabic and in Levantine and in Syrian Arabic available at Link. Now I looked into our library at Link and I saw that we didn't have, we had a few things in Egyptian Arabic that didn't really appeal to me but we had the many stories in Levantine Arabic. So I, for the last five days, I've been doing the uh, mini stories at Link in Levantine Arabic. I'm up to about lesson number 30. And of course, as you start listening to it, you realize, first of all, that Levantine Arabic is closer to Egyptian Arabic than it is to Standard Arabic. But second of all, the more I get into it and the more I listen and read, the more it all seems one language. In other words, after a while, you aren't telling yourself, this is a word, this is a Levantine Arabic word. It's just Arabic. After a while, it just comes in as meaning. So I am very much encouraged to become familiar with the different variants of Arabic as part of my exploration of the Arabic world. So let's just look at the Arabic world where different forms of Arabic are spoken and you know, what, what the sort of boundaries are. Bearing in mind that, at least I have the impression, and some Arabic speakers will tell me I'm wrong, but I think someone who speaks Levantine Arabic goes to Egypt and they kind of can communicate in some mixture of each other's dialect. That this is not the case if you're out in Morocco or Algeria. I'm not sure what the situation is in the Gulf, in Abu Dhabi or in Iraq, but I think there's a high degree of intelligibility within the, at least the Eastern uh, Arabic dialects, the sort of conversational Arabic. 
And of course, everyone is familiar with the standard Arabic, because that's what's on radio and television and so forth, at least insofar as, you know, political debates and written in the newspapers and so forth. So I'm very much encouraged that I did the right thing by getting into standard Arabic, but now I want to explore the spoken varieties. And just a little bit of background, of course, what we call the Arab world, that's a bit of a misnomer. Well, it isn't a misnomer, but we tend to identify Arabic with Islam, with the rise of Islam out of Saudi Arabia, which spread over this vast area uh, where it brought the religion and it also brought the language, Arabic language, because in places like, you know, uh, the Middle East, say the Levant, Syria, Iraq, they spoke a local language and even more so in Morocco, Algeria, where they spoke a Berber language. And, you know, I did visit Petra, uh, which is in Jordan, with my wife. And of course, the wonderful, you know, carvings in the rocks and, and everything that we see and their very clever irrigation system and so forth was created by a people whom we would call Arabs, but they spoke Nabataean or, I don't know, Aramaic or some language, which has now been more or less, you know, absorbed into or converted into their local form of Arabic, but undoubtedly, I'm just guessing, I'm not a scholar, that their form of Arabic retains these influences. And, and these people who live there, I mean, these are people who have a, a tremendous civilization, uh, even before Islam arrived, uh, you know, Mesopotamia is sort of the cradle of world civilizations, or at least in the Western world. And uh, I mean, the, the uh, people who lived in what's today, what is Lebanon or Syria, they created the writing system that, that is basically at the core of uh, the Latin alphabet, the Greek alphabet, the Russian alphabet, and not to mention the Arabic. Uh, a writing system. So these are people with quite a history of civilization and culture prior to the arrival of Islam. And uh, similarly, you know, I was in Morocco, I was in Fez, and I was in Chefchaouen, and, and they speak a language that's even more difficult or more different from standard Arabic, but taxi drivers I met, people I met uh, in restaurants, uh, there was a lady managing a restaurant, we were able to converse in standard Arabic. So my desire now is that I want to be able to understand as many varieties of Arabic as possible. And I will speak some kind of corrupted standard, whatever, if I happen to be in Lebanon, if I should have that opportunity, I'll probably be influenced by the way they're speaking. But I want to be able to understand not only the standard Arabic, but also these uh, variants of Arabic. And even when I listen to my podcasts in standard Arabic, there are always words that are interjected by the speakers that come from their local, whether it be Egyptian or, or Syrian or whatever, Iraqi form of Arabic. So I want, I've always said that my exploration of the Arabic world is going to be long term and it's going to include standard Arabic but it's also in going to include these regional variations of Arabic. And in the new year, we're gonna have uh, more and more material at length in these uh, regional variations of Arabic. Uh, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do it, whether we leave it together as one language or whether we have separate you know, language slots for Levantine, Syrian, uh, you know, Egyptian, uh, whatever, or maybe we just go standard Arabic and conversational Arabic and then group all of these variations in the sort of conversational Arabic language slot. But all of that is something to look forward to in the new year and uh, so I'm spending a little more time now uh, with Arabic, still trying to get in my 100 links a day in Persian and, uh, and Turkish. By the way, someone sent me a phenomenal resource, uh, gosh, Marza, M-A-R-Z-A, which has these wonderful recordings of Persians, Iranians speaking to each other, but there are no transcripts. So I'm trying to figure out how I can get these transcribed because my experience with the automatic transcript service is kind of hit and miss. It actually works better in Persian than it does in Arabic, but it's not ideal. 
The ideal would have a, be to have it properly transcribed with punctuation. If we can get some way of doing it that's not too onerous, and if we can get permission from these people to share it in the library, I may, you know, I would certainly, if we get permission, I'm going to offer that material. And if we do get it transcribed, this Persian material, whoops, I dropped this thing again, uh, in our library. Uh, but, but the idea, and this is also what's behind these uh, Egyptian voices or Syrian voices, is that you just get a bunch of people, individuals, talking about themselves, what they do, their daily lives, for five or ten minutes. They talk naturally, and then they transcribe it. So this way, you are getting the language, but you're also getting to know some of the real people of that language, and it's wonderful learning material. And we will have that available uh, in these various uh, variants of Arabic in link in the new year. And if we can figure out some way to describe these Persian conversations, uh, we will do the same. And if there are other similar sources, please let me know. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you for listening. Bye for now. Uh, you know, when we talk about polyglots, it's not just people who study, it's people you meet in everyday life, like Raja. Yes. Raja speaks five, yes. five seconds. My name is Raja. I work for my parents. Okay? In what's before, the name of the town here? Well, what's the town here? Yes. It's Azru. Azru. Yes. In Morocco. And my restaurant, his name is uh, Restaurant El Hana uh, Shel Haja. And the food was okay. delicious. Lady. Thanks Alaka a lot. Alaka Lady Jiddan. Thanks a lot. Ah, Bel Arabia. Bel Arabia. Bel Arabia. And that is called, uh, you speak. You speak Arabic. And me, I speak English. English, okay. okay? Uh, Raja, Raja here, Raja here, uh, al uh, Mualim, Mualim bil Arabia. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, Raja, but uh, Raja, yatta kallam bil Arabia, bil uh, Darja, bil France, Francia, bil Ingilizia, bil Amazigia, Amazigia. When you say Amazigh, it's Berber. And, uh, and you have to le, know, le, le, Berber is different between between uh, between uh, uh, regions. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, if you uh, if you can uh, say we have uh, four or five Berber yes. here in okay. Morocco. Okay. Let's speak to the camera. Okay. okay. So we have here in Morocco four or five Berber. And uh, it's different uh, between uh, a person and uh, to another one. However, because okay. she has to get back to work, the most important thing is yeah. the food here is delicious. Thanks a lot. And Raja is a wonderful host. Okay. And made them and feel at home. Okay. And don't forget, by the way, if you're interested in my course on how to learn languages, 10 emails, please click on the link. Bye.